So the first um, of our panelists now is Professor Elliot Sober. He is a philosopher with a special interest in the philosophy of evolutionary biology. Elliot is Professor of Philosophy at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Among his best-known works are The Nature of Selection, Evolutionary Theory in Philosophical Focus, Reconstructing the Past, Parsimony, Evolution and Inference, and a book which I have on my own shelves and which I value greatly, Unto Others in Evolution, and the psychology of unselfish behavior, which he jointly wrote with David Wilson. As I say, uh, Elliot will go to the podium and address us for uh, eight minutes before the next panelist comes forward. <laughs> Well, my plan was to discuss the relation of Darwin's theory to the entirety of philosophy in eight minutes. Um, but then I had second thoughts and thought I'd focus on just one philosophical idea, methodological naturalism, and how Darwin's theory is related to it. And I'll also talk about a second philosophical position called metaphysical naturalism, and also ask how Darwin's theory is related to that. Let me begin by describing what I take Darwin's theory to be. It's not everything that Darwin wrote, but this. It includes the idea that the organisms we see around us on Earth trace back to one or a few original progenitors, Darwin's words. It includes the idea that natural selection was, as he says, the main but not the exclusive cause of the diversity we see in life around us. Uh, it regards variation as unguided. Variants don't arise because they would be good for the organism in which they occur. And finally, it thinks of evolution as a slow, long process. That's what I mean by Darwin's theory. Here are the two naturalisms that I want to discuss in relation to Darwin's theory. The first is methodological. Uh, the second is metaphysical. And by metaphysical, that doesn't mean weird. Uh, it means it's a theory about what exists. So methodological naturalism is a philosophical view about what scientific theories ought to be like. Uh, metaphysical naturalism is a view about what exists or, as it happens, doesn't. Well, how is Darwin's theory related to these? Well, it's perfectly obvious, I think, from what I'm calling Darwin's theory. Uh, that the theory conforms to the dictates of methodological naturalism. It doesn't mention a transcendent God. Uh, a more subtle question is, what is the th what's the theory's relationship to the metaphysical doctrine? Well, we can start by what Darwin talks about in The Origin. He consistently argues against the doctrine of special creation. Uh, and his theory is indeed inconsistent with that. The theory is also inconsistent with a slightly different form of creationism called young earth creationism, uh, a form of creationism that's had a lot of political influence in my country uh, since Sputnik. Uh, but the point I want to uh, emphasize is although the theory is inconsistent with those two particular views about what God is like, it's not inconsistent with the existence of God. Uh, when people try to combine uh, Darwin's theory and some form of theism, there are two patterns that their efforts usually f uh, exhibit. The first is a form of theism that predates Darwin's theory, was very popular in the 18th century, called deism. It's the idea of God as a hands-off entity, an agent. God creates the universe, creates the laws of nature, and then stands back, and everything that happens subsequently is the result of the initial conditions and the laws playing themselves out. Uh, and the contrasting form of theism that people endeavor sometimes to reconcile with Darwin's theory is an interventionist idea that God, besides creating the laws of nature, periodically in life's uh, history, rarely or more commonly, depending upon the version, uh, intervenes and, and has an additional effect 
uh, an additional to the one recognized by deism on what we see around us. Now, my point is not that either of these forms of theism are true or plausible, but that Darwin's theory does not say they're false. They're both logically consistent with Darwin's theory. I think this is obvious for the case of deism, perhaps less so for the case of an interventionist God, but I happen to think that the two are logically consistent. That doesn't mean either is true. Well, that's my view about the logical relationships between theism on the one hand and Darwin's theory on the other. Let me change to a, bio a biographical question. What did Darwin think about these two versions of theism? Well, he starts the origin by quoting his mentor, the Cambridge philosopher and historian of science, William Huell. This is before Darwin says anything in his own voice. There's a quotation from Huell. Uh, Huell says, events are brought about not by insulated interpositions of divine power exerted in each particular case, but by the establishment of general laws. And I take it that this is an expression of deism. And it's not just um, a remark that Darwin throws in at the very beginning of the origin and never returns to. Later in the book, he says the following about the relationship of the creator to the diversity we see around us. He says, to my mind, it accords better with what we know of the laws impressed on matter by the creator that the production and extinction of the past and present inhabitants of the world should have been due to secondary causes like those determining the birth and death of the individual. What did Darwin mean by secondary? It meant that God creates the laws of nature and the laws as a secondary consequence of God's initial acts produces this diversity. So this is also deism, this time in Darwin's own voice. Uh, in his autobiography, which Darwin wrote at the end of his life uh, as a private document for his family, he says the following. He talks about the extreme difficulty or rather impossibility of conceiving this immense and wonderful universe, including man, as the result of blind chance or necessity. I feel compelled to look to a first cause having an intelligent mind in some degree analogous to that of man, and I deserve to be called a theist. Well, Darwin sounds like a deist in the origin. He says he's a theist in the autobiography, but there is evidence that he gradually moved towards agnosticism, not just from uh, uh, what his son Francis tells us about, uh, his life and letters, but other sources as well. But the point I want to emphasize here is that's Darwin expressing his philosophy. The theory he created doesn't take a stand on whether God exists. And if there is a God, it doesn't take a stand, I think, on whether deism or interventionism is more plausible. The theory that he had is different from his philosophy. There are many things that Darwin said that I don't count as part of the theory. Darwin was against slavery. That's not part of the theory of evolution. Similarly, his philosophical views about God. So here are the two versions of naturalism with which I began. I think the theory obeys quite clearly the, the dictates of methodological naturalism, but it's neutral, I think, on the metaphysical issue. And to wrap this up, I want to conclude with a bon mot from Jacques Monod. Any confusion between the ideas suggested by science and science itself must be carefully avoided. Thank you.